Overwatch Season 10 is actually massive for the game. This is every single change in the season. Let's break it down. So let's begin with the new hero updates. Venture is now available. However, Venture is immediately available in competitive play. Developer comments, this is a pretty major change from past heroes, but we've always wanted to allow new heroes into competitive when a new season for Overwatch 2 launches. In the past, we wanted to make sure new heroes were free of any bugs or outstanding balance issues, as well as giving players enough time to unlock a hero from the battle pass. Because of the recent hero trial, we're confident Venture is ready to jump into the action right away. These are the venture changes. Impact damage decreased from 60 to 40 on Drill Dash and damage over time increased from 40 to 60. Clobber, this is the melee attack. Impact damage decreased from 40 to 30. Damage over time increased from 30 to 40. And then we move on to the ultimate. This is Tectonic Shock. So the vertical knockback has been decreased by 30%. Developer comments are, we are redistributing the damage on some of their abilities so that positioning relative to the enemy and tracking a target are more important for dealing maximum damage. Before we carry on with the changes, let me introduce you guys to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by War Thunder, an epic military action game that spans an entire century featuring land, sea, and air vehicles. It's free to play and it's playable on PlayStation, PC and Xbox. So what exactly is War Thunder? Well, it perfectly captures the scale and sensation of fierce battles using military equipment. The list of available tanks, planes and helicopters and ships include all iconic machines and lesser known prototypes from the mid 20th century right through to the present year. All vehicles in the game can be upgraded and improved with additional modules. In addition, War Thunder offers a huge amount of visual customization elements and skins allowing you to make your combat machine unique. In War Thunder, all advanced military technologies are available. Guided missiles, active protection systems, smoke screens, night vision devices and more, as well as reconnaissance and strike drones, and even a nuclear strike that can flatten the entire map. War Thunder has a very unique damage model. There is no need for health bars. Every hit on the enemy has its effect. Disable their track and you immobilize the opponent. If you hit the plane's fuel tank, it will ignite. Each hit is visualized with an X-ray mode. War Thunder's recent update, Alpha Strike, is now available. This gives you access to Hungarian aviation with a whole ton of new equipment, both modern and classic. Visual effects have been significantly improved and gameplay has been refined based on community requests. A new map for intense tank and aviation battles, North Holland, fight in the red light district or create a small apocalypse in the shopping center. So why don't you download and play War Thunder right now? It is free to play. Use the link in the description below. All new players and those who haven't played War Thunder for half a year or more will receive some special bonuses. Rentals to the P-40E1 aircraft and the M4 tank for a week, along with free unique skins for them. A special decorator, Eagle of Valor, 100,000 Silver Lions, three premium vehicles for free, a week of premium account and even more gifts so hurry up the american vehicle bonuses season will end soon so once again thank you to war thunder for sponsoring today's video next up is the wrecking ball rework so let's break down all of these details essentially every ability is altered so wrecking ball grappling claw hold the jump input while the grappling claw is attached to terrain to retract it pulling yourself towards the anchor point this action can be rebound in his hero settings now has a one second cooldown if wrecking ball never reaches ramming speed before cancelling the ability interrupting him with hack hinder and stuns will still trigger the full cooldown the maximum duration timer no longer triggers unless he reaches ramming speed so, these are wholesale changes to the way Grappling Claw works. They are it, It's just straight up better than it was. Gives you more mobility options. The, the, the way you can retract it is just really strong. That's going to let you get into certain positions. It's going to let you get out of bad positions as well if you're ever stuck off the map, which is not great. Also, Adaptive Shields can now be reactivated to redistribute up to 300 overhealth to nearby allies, capping at 75 per person. Enemy and ally detection radius increase from 10 to 13 meters 
And finally, the ultimate minefield. So the health is increased from 50 to 60. And the developer comments are, the general goals here are to add a direct way for Wrecking Ball to support his allies aside from purely enemy team disruption. Make the hero more approachable while also adding more avenues for skill expression and improve quality of life around the grapple. I think the adaptive shields change is going to be massive for Wrecking Ball. Reinhardt's Earth Shatter gets buffed. Knockdown duration increased from 2.75 to 3 seconds and the shockwave range has been increased from 20 to 25 meters. Sigma's Experimental Barrier has been buffed. Movement speed increased from 16.5 to 20 meters per second. Dev comments are, this change will improve Sigma's ability to protect allies that are further away from him. Sombra gets nerfed. The virus damage has been decreased from 100 to 90. Tracer sees Pulse Bomb and Recall nerfed. Cooldown has been increased from 12 to 13 seconds for Recall. And Pulse Bomb, the base projectile size, has decreased from 0.2 to 0.1 meters. The total projectile size is now 0.25 meters. And the developer comments here are, there is now more downtime before Tracer can safely re-engage after diving away and Pulse Bomb will require more precision. So interesting nerves there for Tracer. Doomfist's Rocket Punch gets buffed. The Empowered Punch is no longer consumed when the windup is cancelled by using Seismic Slam or Power Block. And the dev comments are, this is a quality of life improvement. It streamlines the transition between charging up an Empowered Rocket Punch and another ability by removing the requirement of pressing the cancel input first. I think this is a nice little buff, to be honest. Iliari sees changes to her solar rifle. Primary fire recovery increased from 0.2 to 0.25 seconds. However, secondary fire heal per second has been increased from 105 to 115. Junker Queen's impact damage on Carnage has been increased from 90 to 105. Life Weaver is up next. So Rejuvenating Dash heal increased from 50 to 60. And Tree of Life pulse healing has also been increased from 75 to 90. Lucio sees Sonic Amplifier damage per projectile decreased from 20 to 18. However, Soundwave's damage has been increased from 35 to 45 damage. Moira sees Biotic Grasp damage per second decreased from 65 to 60. Moira's Coalescence is also changed, so Self Heal per second has been increased from 50 to 55. Limited Time Mode Clash Trial. Clash is an upcoming core game mode in Overwatch 2. Teams must battle back and forth over five capture points with each capt captured objective adding a point to the prevailing team score. Teams can win in two ways, either by having control of all five objectives at once or by scoring five points total before the other team. Clash will be available as a limited time trial through April the 29th. How Clash is played. Five total objectives placed in a linear pattern on a mirrored map. Only one objective is active at a time. Matches start with the center objective active. Players capture an objective by standing on it and filling in a progress bar. Capture progress cannot be made if enemy players are contesting the objective. When a team captures the current objective, they are awarded one point to their total score and a new objective moving forward from the scoring team's sides is activated. Objectives can be secured multiple times. If a team is pushed off an objective and the other team successfully captures it, the next active point will be in the opposite direction. Win conditions. Complete one of these conditions to win the match. A team has successfully captured five objectives throughout the match to reach a total score of five. Regardless of score, a team manages to take the final objective A or E on the opponent's side. This also features the new map, Hanaoka. Explore never-before-seen corners of Hanamura in the new map, Hanaoka. Inspired by the visual themes of the beloved assault map, explore the shops and restaurants around town, or follow the scent of secure trees in once-proud Shimada. 
asshole. Mythic Hero Skin Updates. Mythic Hero Skins are now unlocked in the new Mythic Shop in exchange for Mythic Prisms. Mythic Hero Skins are unlocked for 50 Mythic Prisms with a starting set of customizations that can then be leveled up with 10 Mythic Prisms per level. You can unlock the skin and all available customizations for a Mythic Hero Skin for 80 Prisms. Mythic Prisms can be earned in the Premium Battle Pass and used in the Mythic Shop to purchase the current featured Mythic Hero Skin for the season and select previous Mythic Hero Skins. You can earn a total of 80 Mythic Prisms when you complete the Premium Battle Pass. Earning Mythic Prisms in the Premium Battle Pass is the easiest way to unlock a Mythic Hero Skin and all customizations each season. You can also, because of course you can, purchase additional Mythic Prisms in-game or in your platform's store's marketplace. Challenges. Completing weekly challenge milestones will now reward additional Battle Pass XP. Overwatch coins that were earned in the weekly challenges can now be earned in the Battle Pass for all players. Reduce the number of weekly challenges. And the dev comments, the number of weekly challenges has grown over time and we are simplifying what players can aim to accomplish while also making earning Battle Pass XP more straightforward. Endorsement changes. Players who were actioned for disruptive behavior and reduced to endorsement level zero cannot use text or voice chat features until they return to endorsement level one. And the dev comments are, since we added the endorsement system to Overwatch, players who have been actioned because of social reports, inappropriate communication, gameplay sabotage, etc., have had their endorsement level reduced to zero. That part of the system isn't changing, but going forward, level zero players will no longer be able to speak in voice channels or type in text chat in most modes. Hide my name. Updated option in Streamer Protect found under your social options. You are now able to hide your battle tag from other players in your group and from your friends in the match as well. When enabled, anywhere your battle tag is displayed to players during a match now displays a randomized, anonymized battle tag instead of only to the player with the hide my name setting visually enabled. And the dev comments are, the hide my name setting in the social options now displays a random anonymized battle tag to all players in the match instead of only to the player with the hide my name setting enabled. New settings have been added to hide my name from friends and hide my name from group. Of these two settings, hide my name from friends takes priority when group members are also friends. The large list, a large list, list sorry, of handcrafted battle tags has been created to support this feature. Could it contain Easter eggs or silly references? Now, there is a bit of additional information I want to add to this. So after a game, you will be able to see the actual battle tag of the players in your match, even if they're using this. Uh, and also, if you report players with the hide my name setting enabled, um, their battle tag is obviously still visible by Blizzard. So it's not like they're hiding their name and then they can just be naughty players in the game and do what they like. No, if they get reported, it will still be attributed to their Battle.net account because it still is their Battle.net account. Progression. Added progression badges and sub badges and rewards for venture. Rewards can be found in the hero challenges. Lever penalties. Two new thresholds for unranked leave penalties have been added. Leaving two out of 20 games will result in a five-minute suspension from queuing for most modes. Ten or more out of 20 games will result in a 48-hour suspension from queuing for most modes. All other threshold tiers are unchanged. Dev comments. Overwatch 2 is a competitive game even for unranked game modes and... The match experience for all remaining players is negatively affected when a player leaves before it is completed. Remember, a penalty only apply, applies when you leave games and not when you complete games. By introducing a lighter five-minute penalty, we aim to discourage players from deliberately leaving games they don't want to play, while not impacting those who may have had technical issues or an urgent need to step away from the game, which they can resolve by the time the queue suspension is finished. The larger 48-hour suspension aims to target a very small portion of players who are aggressively leaving games. Competitive penalties. Leaving 10 games in competitive play will now result in a season ban regardless of the number of games played. 
players can still get banned from competitive play in as few as five games if they leave very consistently and don't complete enough games to get back into good standing. Games completed in competitive play now count towards the 20-game window of the unranked lever penalty. Dev comments, We already suspended players who leave a competitive at match and increase penalties up to a season ban for leaving games frequently. But players can work their way back into good standing if they complete several matches. However, this new rule will stop players from gaming the system over time. Competitive role-specific titles. End-of-season titles for competitive role queue will now include the role the rank was achieved in. Examples include Champion Tank, Champion Support, Champion Damage, Open Queue Champion. Competitive Progress. Each role rank card now displays associated competitive role specific title. Role rank cards can now be selected to open the match history for the selected role. Match history will display the following map, game mode, heroes, role date, score, results of the match. Match history can now be selected to open the game report for a match. Grouping restrictions. Now, I'm going to put all of these on the screen um, because I think this information is, is crucial, but we are going to go over it. But yeah, it's all on the screen in case you guys want to pause, check it out and, and whatnot. But anyway, this is the details. All previous competitive grouping restrictions have been removed. All groups in competitive play are now classed as narrow or wide. Players between bronze and diamond must be within five divisions of each other player in their group to be in a narrow group. Players at Master must be within three divisions of each other player in their group to be in a narrow group. Players at Grandmaster and Champion cannot be in narrow groups regardless of how close their ranks are. This restriction ensures that our highest ranked players have the highest quality narrow matches. Narrow groups will always be matched against other narrow groups or solo players. If a group has both wide and narrow configurations of players, the narrow configuration will always be prioritised. Any group that does not meet the criteria is considered a wide group. Wide groups of four players may not queue. This restriction exists so that solo players are never required to make a wide match. Wide groups have increased queue times and reduced match quality because it's more difficult to find another group of players with the same rank in the same roles to match against. The amount a player's rank progresses changes after each match is modified by the group's width. The wider the group is, the less their ranks will change when winning or losing. The higher the rank of the highest ranked player in a wide group, the less the ranks of all players in the group will change when winning or losing. Players will now be informed if the configuration of roles they have selected would result in a wide group. The tier legend has been updated and a new banner has been added to explain the rules described above. So this is quite complicated, but this idea of wide and narrow groups. A narrow group is essentially everyone is around the same skill tier, skill level. A wide group is you can have a bronze with a grandmaster, a bronze with a champion, right? But if you do that and you queue for competitive, if you win that game, you will literally get no rank. You will get hardly any increase because that's to prevent smurfing. Because, of course, if the bronze got their full attributed credit for winning a like a standard bronze competitive game, but wait, they've got their champion DPS friend with them. That is boosting and Blizzard want to avoid that. So this is quite complicated, to be honest, guys. Um, but basically, it means that what Overwatch are letting you do now is play competitive with anybody. So it's always been an issue with the game in the past where you couldn't play with your friends. I mean, years and years ago, I suffered from I was in a different rank to my friends, so I couldn't play with them. And it was it was frustrating, right? Now, though, that's gone. And I think this is obviously... Well, I don't think obviously, I think this is definitely a positive for the game, but it's going to be interesting what this is going to do to match quality because, uh, yeah. <laughs> rank information, new modifier, wide. This modifier reduces changes in rank progress when winning or losing matches. The wider your group, the less your rank progress will change with each win or loss. The modifier volatile has been renamed to demotion. Arrows displayed under the modifiers have been changed to point from left to right instead of right to left. New modifier, demotion protection. This modifier appears on the rank progress bar to denote when you did not go down a skill division because of a loss. If you lose the next match after, then you are dropped down to the previous skill division. Victory and defeat have been added below the rank progress bar where the modifiers are displayed. Golden weapons. 
Golden weapons can now be purchased with either legacy competitive points or 2024 competitive points. You cannot purchase weapons with a combination of both currencies. So there you go, everybody. Those are all of the changes coming to Overwatch Season 10. I think this is going to be a pretty big season. You've got to remember, new heroes are now free going forward. We've got the Mercy Mythic skin. We've got um, the new Mythic shop. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. We've got the uh, changes to grouping. We've got a load of balance changes. We've got a trial of Clash, which I don't think Clash is coming to the game until later seasons, maybe even season 12, although don't quote me on that. Um, but it's going to be cool to try a new game mode out. So I think, yeah, it's going to be an interesting time for Overwatch. Um, it should be a pretty huge season. I'm, I'm really looking forward to try and venture again because I think they were really, really awesome um, in the trial. But obviously, balance changes have come into effect. Will they affect the hero? We'll have to wait and see. All right, guys, let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then do like the video, subscribe to the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you lovely lot on the next video. See you soon.